nothing less natural than reading. Reading is an acquired set of skills that literally changes the brain. Everyone should be reading books. This is books it. are life experience, books are knowledge, books are community. Without books, we wouldn't be human in the way that we are. Literacy is one of the greatest inventions of the human species. First fire, then reading, I'd say. Reading is the blink of the eye in our evolutionary clock. It's only 6,000 years old. And it began in such a simple way to mark how many wine vessels or sheep we had. And with the birth of alphabetic systems, we began to have an efficient means of remembering and storing knowledge. What reading does is exploit a principle of design in the human brain that allows it to make new connections between visual regions, language regions, regions for thought and emotion. It begins actually afresh in every new reader. It doesn't exist inside our head. Each person who has to learn to read has to create a brand new circuit in their brain. Reading a great story is so much more than entertainment. Reading actually has many therapeutic benefits. Bibliotherapy is the art of prescribing fiction to cure life's ailments. Claustrophobia, rage, exhaustion, and the cure is Zorba the Greek. Reading brings three magical powers, creativity, intelligence, and empathy. Reading for the joy of it is one of the two key factors in a kid's later economic success. You're more likely to not be in prison, to vote, to own your own home. All of these advantages and benefits happen as a result of Lipsy. Your brain goes into a meditative state, a physical process which slows your heartbeat and calms you down and reduces anxiety. When we read at a surface level, we're just getting the information. When we read deeply, we use much more of our cerebral cortex. Deep reading means that we make analogies, we make inferences, which allows us to be truly critical, analytic, empathic human beings. We think of the book as the work, but the book is just a delivery mechanism. The novel is evolving. There's all sorts of amazing books which are being written deliberately to be read on phones. These kind of new mediums, they're giving a voice to new generation of writers yeah. who don't have to kind of get through a bottleneck. It stops us from having this kind of conditioning as to what is good yeah. writing and it actually allows people just to talk and share stories and to share experiences. It doesn't matter the medium, it doesn't matter how you get it, it's a story. And the book maybe provides this illusion that this is it. It's never been it, it's a way into a thought process. We brought together scholars and scientists from over 30 countries to do research about the impact of digitization on reading we found that there is what they call a screen inferiority. There is a lot that can be equally well read on your smartphone. Shorter news updates, but with something that is cognitively or emotionally challenging. Reading on a screen leads to poorer reading comprehension uh, than reading on paper. The reality is it's not what or how much we read, but how we read that's really important. The very volume is having negative effects because to absorb that much, there's a propensity towards skimming. The reading brain has a plastic circuitry. The circuit will reflect the characteristics of the medium with which it reads. The characteristics of the digital are going to be reflected in the circuit. 
If we don't train those capacities, we may eventually lose the ability to understand more complex content and also perhaps to engage and to imagine. The human imagination is a fantastic thing. We're very flexible. We find ways of doing what we want with the technology we've got. I think we'll see a lot more short story collections and I think we'll see a lot more shorter books. I've changed the way that I write because children's attention span has got shorter. The chapters are short. It's incredibly visual. Look, shiny like a sweet. <laughs> Just as people can be bi and trilingual, my hope is that we will be developing a biliterate brain. We can discipline ourselves to choose the medium that is best suited for what we're reading so that we don't lose the extraordinary gift that reading has given our species. So what would happen if we stopped reading books? We'd die. We'd die. We'd be so bored. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that, be sure to check out these videos next. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to get a notification each time we upload a new video.